I'm Terry done by Diggity. Bottom left hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the Green Zerg. Once again, upper right hand corner, we have Kiko starting as the Brown Terran from Bulgaria. I believe a teammate of Grast on Team Psy in STPL. This is on Vertebrae, which we are going to see in upcoming BSL matches. This is kind of the more creative map. Uh, are those doodads? I'm wondering if this is actually... I have not seen this map before, by the way. So I'm not sure if this is just... A little bit of the gap here and these are actually blockading or this is just kind of a map feature that can be rolled over not sure yet here's a natural expansion fairly wide then it is a distance to a third and that third is a mineral only but there is kind of a, uh, a a decently defendable gap here another gap right there and then the third gas is somewhat defendable because it's just a little bit of a you can see where lurkers or other things can blockade this quite easily uh, nearby middle across the middle of the map there's these ramps otherwise so you can see where it's kind of divided into map control can play a big factor but where you can just kind of get up on these ramp sides and hold it and really draw your opponent back and do a lot of damage there but the map is split in half vertically six o'clock location and 12 o'clock location have a gas and a decent amount of minerals up here so it seems like once you get into bases it's decently easy to go ahead and defend them Getting across mid-map can be an issue, so map control plays a really big factor. But the natural expansion, okay, so you can just walk over those, it looks like. But the natural expansion, getting that third base is, is an issue, I guess. Unless you're really being aggressive with your territory uh, territorial control. I don't know, we'll have to see how this plays out over the long term in BSL Season 13. Barracks being built looks like we do, I think this was a 12th hatch. Actually, it looks like it might have been a uh, 11 hatch from Rancor. Um, and grabbing that spawning pool as well. SCV making its way across. You know what this map reminds me of a little bit? It reminds me of the old school map Destination-ish, except Destination had more clogging towards the center and it wasn't a top left, bottom right uh, map. Gas being grabbed right around the 215 mark, which suggests we are going to see, I think we're just going to see the standard Mutalisk style build here. Kiko actually looks like Kiko wants to go for a 14 command center off of this, not building any Marines just yet, getting that command center down. No drone scout also from Rancor, so this might play out for Kiko. Extractor is up, three drones in gas. So it's gonna be a while, and the Overlord actually holding up short. So Rancor may be opting to go ahead and scout with Zerglings. Four Zerglings being produced now. This is going to be a big advantage, Supply Depot, down for Kiko, and Kiko also has this SCV in the base, so knows the timing that's going to be necessary to potentially put down a bunker or not. And actually, if these... So seeing four Zerglings might even opt to just skip a bunker altogether with just the four. So I think wants to hang around, wants to see that last egg, whether it is Zerglings or not, because that will really be the depictor. And so sees a drone, and with that, yeah, might opt to just hang out with Marines and SCVs to go ahead and defend that front door and skip and also, if you can keep that SCV alive, finally the SCV taken out, maybe that will provoke a bunker just in case. Um, SCV is moving down here. But no, it looks like you're going to try to play it thin. Command center is up. Two Marines in position. It looks like two, bunk uh, two barracks have been dropped otherwise. And gas now being built on the three-minute mark. The Zerglings in large numbers now starting to press forward. A second SCV scout making its way across. The Zerglings holding up. At the ramp, this is kind of another, I guess, feature of this map, is, is if you can control these areas, you can deny more scouting information, which oftentimes does play in Zerg's favor. That SCV getting pinned to the corner, but it looks like, I think there is a corner of a spot of that lair. So I believe Kiko knows that this is going to be two hatch Mutalisk. Academy going up before engineering bay, so, and also a bunker preventatively. There are all sorts of Zerglings making their way across. A lot of Marines, and I think this, is this bunker going to finish in time? Zerglings flooding up the bunker, not quite finished. Finishes just in the nick of time, but there's not SCVs grouping, and it looks like the Zerglings, eight Zerglings able to flood into the main because Kiko not sealing the rest of that front door. That's going to slow down gas. This is going to be significant as well because this potentially is going to slow down that engineering bay, which means that Mutalisk attack is going to be oop, attacking his own Marine. And if that academy gets knocked out, some firebats being produced. Nice recovery from Kiko. But this is going to be firebats that are, again, not marines. 
Creep Colony on the front, Spire being built as well. Another SCV Scout moving out. So Kiko should be able to get eyes on that Spire. Firebats in position, no third barracks as of yet, and again, no engineering bay. As far as a follow-up, SCV does get killed, sees, that, sees both the Spire and the layers, and that additional gas being built, which suggests Rancor is going to go much more ag aggressive with this Mutalisk play. But Kiko, economy stifled, first of all, from that Ling Flood, has a couple... Looks like SEVs in the way to go ahead and blockade, but these Marines gonna, or sorry, these Zerglings gonna go the far end around. Stim has been upgraded, so more economic disruption at the natural expansions. This is kind of the the problem of having such a wide choke, and this might be a factor of just this map being newer and Kiko not knowing the best place to put that bunker to go ahead and defend all of this territory. The Zerglings trying to press through, but the, the Zerglings plus these Mutalisks that are now incoming especially before range is finished and off just two barracks worth of Marines and several of which, so no medics out yet. This is only what, five Marines? And I don't see any turrets. So there's the engineering bay finally, but the turrets are not building as of yet. And they needed to be building a few seconds ago. Finally, the turret is being built over that barracks, but I don't know that there's, there's enough anti-air or just anti anything with these Zerglings and these Mutalisks that are gonna be incoming shortly. Rancor moving out a drone to go ahead and take an additional base out in the field. Five Mutalisks pressing forward, slightly delayed. So one turret to defend the barracks looks like one, sorry, I take it back as far as the turret timing. One turret at the main, one turret in the natural expansion and some additional being built over that edge wall. This is only four Mutalisks with this timing. So able to slow down one turret being built, but with the rest of this and with the medics in position, it looks like Kiko is going to be able... To, wow, actually, nice snipe with... That's actually a really impressive snipe, considering this is four Mutalisks and there's a medic there. But Rancor grabbing the upper left-hand base. So Kiko stabilizing a little bit. The economy has been delayed, waiting on level one weapons. The Mutalisks sneaking around, finding double turrets right there. And this is four Mutalisks, not five, keep in mind. So Rancor trying to do it a little bit with a, a bit of a thin force. Does have additional Mulisks that are grouping up. Level 1 weapons is on the way. There's the eight Mulisks fully grouped. And keep in mind, these Zerglings are still out in the field. At the very least, on Kiko's part, zero threat, which if Rancor wants to, Rancor can just continue to build that drone count as a result. The Marines pressing up. That turret, plus the Marines able to take out one Mulisk, that turret exploding, burning to the ground. The Zerglings flooding through. It looks like they're going to work on those turrets to the south. So one turret down. Has another turret built, uh, burning. Looks like the SEVs are going to be there to repair this time. But still more time, more economic disruption. And that is allowing Rancor to go ahead. And although this additional gas has been somewhat delayed. Putting down an additional creep colony. So Rancor wants to continue to be aggressive with these Mutalisks. Level 1 Weapons is going to be there shortly. I wonder if he's going to hold up. And he's also getting, it looks like behind this, uh, Lurker Tech. But Rancor playing very, very aggressively. I'm actually looking for him to continue to drone up behind this. But instead, it looks like he wants to just try to end the game or at least inflict as much pain as possible right now on Kiko. Kiko still sitting on just two barracks. Does have a factory built. Finally grabbing a starport. But that starport going to be somewhat delayed to get a radiate out to, and so these mules are going to rain for quite a long time. Another creep colony in the upper left-hand corner. Some additional overlords being built. And the Marines look like they're trying, yeah, they're going to try to catch those mutalisks in open position to the north. So the mutalisks still looking to be a threat. The factory floating up above to go ahead and spot mutalisks over that high ground, which is going to help the turret defense right there. Still only two barracks, though, for Kiko. Has managed to keep most of these Marines alive in between. But I don't know that Rancor's really capitalized on this and droned up. He's mostly, what looks like, has uh, additional sunk colonies. Has gotten lurkers out in the field. Maybe wants to kind of plant those lurkers. Does have his third gas, but is not yet mining on that third gas. Is now starting to drone up. These additional racks just feel extremely late. Control tower going down. Science facility going down, finally. And Kiko, so kind of both players, like, Kiko's not going to be punished as much as the, the punishment could have been, it could have been really bad. Basically, Rancor could have just kept those mules in the air and droned, 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 droned. Instead, 
it looks like Rancor might just opt to bring these Lurkers forward and try to plant Lurkers at the natural expansion with these Mulesks overhead and just try to wipe out the Medic Marine army as it's coming out. One, So 10 Mulesks overhead, eating a decent amount of damage. They do have that level one weapons. It looks like he is going to dedicate to a decent Mutalisk attack. Hold pos Whoa, I was going to say hold position Lurkers, but one Lurker actually group unburrowing, and I believe that was a reveal to Kiko. Another bunker being planted for Kiko, worried about a potential all-in right here. Third gas is now producing. Irradiate is also on the way, and Irradiate actually for Kiko could be a huge swing of momentum. So the only downside is Kiko's been very, very light on barracks production, grabbing a machine shop right here. Potentially wants to get a, a siege tank out to go ahead and clear this front door. But I don't know that Rancor's really punished uh, Kiko for, first of all, the, the passive play. Able to pick off a mutilus. Nice. Stepping in and picking off a mutilus right there. Handful of Marines being assaulted. Still eight mutilus and more mutilus being produced. This is my worry for Rancor. There might be a quick shift in momentum as that science vessel is out. If Kiko can just defend it, Irradiate is in position to be dropped on this Mutalist army, and that is a lot of investment. Keep in mind, this is not just level one weapons, this is level one armor as well. That is a sizable investment to lose. So Rancor is gonna need to drop a Scourge, and the, the ticker's running, that's gonna be 10, that's 10 energy off. But currently Rancor is setting up a contain of both Lurkers and Mutalisks towards the front. Diving in, is gonna be able to, wow, critically pick off that Siege Tank, but eats and irradiate on top of it Takes the Science Vessel out as well, but these Mutalisks just getting obliterated. You can see all of them looking purple and bruised. Not sure how irradiates cause... I guess it's radiation, so maybe it causes bruising that way. Another hatchery being built in the upper left-hand corner. Hive Tech on the way. Hive Tech feels a bit delayed, but I don't think Rancor is going to pay for it. Mostly because Kiko has been sitting so thin on everything. Fourth Barracks, maybe because of the SimCity... Uh, with these turrets as well. See another siege tank out. This is still just four barracks, another science vessel being produced. And with that picking up the science vessel, it's going to be a bit of a delay before that siege tank can walk out and clear these lurkers on the front. That is allowing Rancor to go ahead and continue to harvest additional gas in the upper left-hand corner and push that tech. Hive tech about halfway finished. So Kiko using Comsat now to push those Lurkers back, playing this potentially a little bit too slow. The Lurkers being cleaned up to the north. They are able to kill a handful of Medic Marines there. Bit of delay on the continued upgrades as well from Kiko. Single Medic being very brave. Just wants to go and see what, I guess, Hydralists look like out on the front. So now, yeah, slow playing to break this contain. I don't know if Kiko's going to be able, especially with Hive Tech in the background, I don't know that Kiko, even if they get in position to go ahead and grab that third, if they're going to be able to sneak a third base. Six o'clock location going into Rancor's hands. Rancor still pretty decently saturated at all locations. Has the economic advantage, double evolution chambers to maintain an upgrade advantage. Has a greater Spire morphing, interestingly enough. With those Milos. So wants to follow this up with potential Guardians absolutely everywhere. But keep in mind, and that, that actually might pay off considering I think that was a decision upon seeing those siege tanks in that factory. Because the siege tanks eat into that gas, which means fewer science vessels. Kiko missing an opportunity to take out an Overlord there. So Rancor is slow playing, playing it, buying himself some time. I don't know if there's going to be enough irradiate to deal with the Guardians. Uh, especially if the Guardians come in from the north, if they come in from this angle as well, might be able to get something accomplished on top of everything else. The SCV has managed to sneak out, potentially get some scouting information. But I think Kiko wants to win it right here with especially seeing how delayed that third is. Just with the army that he has on the ground. Unfortunately for Kiko, I think Rancor, despite being in the red here, has plenty of lurkers, plenty of hydralisks, plenty of everything else. To go ahead and finish this out. And this is only just a mineral. Never mind. Maybe Kiko just grouping up. No, now moving out. So now Rancor just needs to make sure. Yeah, they can create, create some delay. The Guardian's actually morphing in midfield to deal with this army. Hydralisks are also going to be in position to kind of work with those Guardians to push back those science vessels. 
Six o'clock base is up, <clears throat> but not mining currently for Rancor. And the siege tanks unseaging briefly, and they are going to be a liability in in short order because that is eight guardians now moving up. Marines peeling forward. Science vessels moving forward want to drop an irradiate, but here's the thing: it's easier to just unbunch the guardians. So now Kiko in full retreat. Science vessels trying to be repaired. They're both stranded. Science vessels are gone. That was effect outside of Marines that do not trade well against Guardians. That was the only anti-air. A Wraith actually out of nowhere with Cloak. There's not an Overlord. Or sorry, there's no Overlord nearby to provide that support. But is it going to be enough? Another Wraith with Cloak. Pressing forward. That one getting picked off. Looks like, yeah, not enough energy, unfortunately, with that Cloak. So the Guardians and Hydralisks now pressing into the natural expansion. Lurkers look like they're going to... As soon as these Lurkers burrow, this is going to be very difficult to deal with. Some Ultralisks moving in as well. Rancor just flooding into the natural expansion. This is certainly going to be GG from Kiko. There was a counter, it looks like, at the 6 o'clock location that I missed. But honestly, it's not going to be enough. Too little, too late. And Rancor, I don't even think, was mining at this base just yet. I like the decision from Kiko. It's like, okay, I'm going to lose all these units to Guardians anyway. Let me go ahead and get done what I can get done. But yeah, just ended up getting flooded overall. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We got one more between Kiko and Rancor. Hopefully it'll be another fun set. Thanks for listening.